I'm joined by Darren Peterson from LG to talk about WebOS 2.0. Now, Darren, I think it's fair to say that last year, LG pretty much changed the game as far as smart TV was concerned with WebOS. So how do you improve on, on something that, that's groundbreaking? So um, as we were discussing, we're not going to change something that's, um, that's so, so good. Um, we're not going to change something that's not broke. So we're building on that promise that we made last year to make things um, simple for our TV customers. Um, so there's a few key changes that we've made, um, but we've very much left the overall UX um, very similar to last year because it worked so well. Um, we had great feedback from our customers, great feedback from retailers, um, and all the media loved it as well. So we're very much keeping the same approach, just adding some subtle changes to, to uh, enhance the experience. So one of the key things is, and I'll, I'll, I'll risk something not working, I'm going to turn the TV off, and then I'm going to boot it up again, because what we've done um, is we've been focusing on the overall performance, um, and we've increased the boot time by about 60%. So as users' behaviour change and they want to access their on-demand services straight away, we need to be able to allow them to access WebOS immediately. So you can see there, WebOS has come up really quickly. So on previous year's devices, it was still taking a bit of time to load up. Uh, we've, we've provided some software updates to speed that up. Um, but on the new devices, they've been optimised so that the, the services are launching very, very quickly. Um, so 60% faster than uh, previous years. Um, one of the other key new services we've launched is something we call My Channels. So this allows our customers to bookmark their favourite channels. So bringing that kind of live TV experience to the launcher bar. So you can uh, bookmark your uh, channels through um, the built-in tuner or even pull through channels from the set-top box. So if I hit my channels, oh, sorry, wrong button. Uh, what it will do is it expand the folder. So you can see this customer has uh, favourited these various channels. And whatever channel you're on, so for example, whatever this is, I can uh, simply add um, and it will pop up straight away in, the, in my channel. So a really nice way for the user to, to customise their launcher and bring through some of their um, favourite channels. So if we come out of the launcher, one of the other things we've done is, if you remember last year's um, menu, while it looked nice and was an improvement on previous uh, smart TV models, it still was like a, a traditional kind of TV menu where you change your settings. But what we've done this year, and I'll step back a little bit, is we've made, it, we've made it much easier for the user to access settings without moving away from what they're watching. So if you simply press settings, you get this lovely, um, easy to access uh, list of the different settings that you can toggle with. So instead of going away from what you're watching, it's much easier to, to find what type of uh, picture uh, settings you want or, or sound etc so a really nice way for the for the customer to access the various settings and likewise for inputs as well so instead of having to go anywhere else you can simply press inputs it's not obstructing what you're viewing and you can you can easily jump around the different um, feeds in your TV so again very very intuitive and easy to easy to use so let's go back there so I'll pass that back to you um, We've also made some changes to what we called LG Store last year. Um, we've changed the name first of all. So it's now called the LG Content Store, just really emphasizing that it's a place for the customer to go and find content. Um, we've removed the live TV feed, so instead of coming in here and viewing uh, options for live TV and on-demand, it's now simply just on-demand services. Um, the reason being is we saw that customers, once they navigated to this part of the device, were really just looking for on-demand content. Um, so there's no kind of confusion here about whether it's coming from live TV or on-demand. Um, it's simply all on-demand services. Um, we've also updated the top of the store, so rather than just being a blank um, background, it will now uh, show um, either generic images or images of, of, of content. So it could be uh, images of um, uh, TV programs on BBC iPlayer, or Netflix and, and so on, or Now TV, for example. Um, so you, it's very similar to last year in that you can scroll through the various content on offer. So in the UK, we'll have the likes of um, BBC iPlayer, Wacky TV, uh, metadata integrated, and we're working with our partners to integrate uh, further metadata so that the customers can see more and more content options. And just like last year, you click on the content and it will go through to a um, more information about that content and you can jump through to the service that's um, providing that content. And one of the other things we've done is the store, as simple as it is, um, has a lot of content. So you can end up going through quite a few pages and then to get back to a different part of the menu could have been a few steps backwards. 
But what we've done is we've added a quick access menu. So wherever you are within the store, you can hit the quick access menu and you can jump um, to some of the key pages. So rather than having to go back, 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 you can just hit the quick access menu and jump straight through to the, some of the key pages. Um, so they're kind of the main changes um, over the previous uh, version of WebOS. Um, really just building on that promise to make TV simple again. Darren, thank you very much. Pleasure.